Hello everyone, welcome to Texture Myth. In this session, we are going to discuss about few more medical terminology prefixes that denotes number, quantity or amount. Okay, so in our previous session also we discussed few about these medical prefixes. So again, this is our fourth part for the same topic. So let's see what all prefixes we have today and uh, what we will do firstly I will show you the prefix and will explain about the prefix and then we will see the few example for that prefix so that it would give you a proper picture of the entire prefix uh, topic okay so let's see the first one the first prefix is poly so we will use poly in order to showcase the sense of many excessive or multiple okay so whenever you you are going to represent something as a multiple level at many level or excessive level then in that case we will use the prefix poly now to make it more clear let's see few example the first example is polydiapsia the terminology polydiapsia is composed with the help of prefix poly right you can see poly is there and diapsia is different thing now if you read about it excessive thirst often associated with conditions such as diabetes so when a person is suffering from polydiapsia he will feel uh, he will uh, suffer from the excessive thirst okay so whenever there is something uh, denoted as excessive then in that case we will use the terminology prefix as poly you can see we are using poly here so that's why poly is denoting excessive excessive thirst so you can see poly is used to sound like a excessive then we have polyuria same goes here poly excessive production of urine often seen in conditions like diabetic mellitus okay so both thing you can see both are the common like disease for the diabetic patient polydiapsia and polyuria in case of polydiapsia excessive thirst is there and in case of polyuria excessive production of urine is there so both thing are at excessive level that's why we are using the prefix as poly okay fine then we have polyneuropathy polyneuropathy a disorder affecting multiple nerves so again you can see that there is a sense of multiple many many or multiple both are same right so in that case also we will use that prefix poly and that's why we made it as polyneuropathy a disorder affecting multiple nerves leading to sensory and motor dysfunction okay so if such thing is uh, suffered by the patient then in that case we can say that he is suffering from a multiple nerve disorder or many nerves are uh, not affecting well that's why it is showing uh, we are using the term poly and here the poly is representing as multiple then we have polycystic okay polycystic which means having multiple cyst as seen in polycystic kidney disease or polycystic ovary syndrome so in this case also we are using uh, poly in order to show multiple okay in order whenever there is a sense of multiple thing then we will use the poly thing poly and poly means prefix that denotes about the multiple or excessive okay so yeah this is all about the poly prefix where we discuss about uh, for example polydiapsia polyuria polyneuropathy and polycystic now let's move to the next slide on next slide we have another terminology which is quadri now why we use quadri quadri prefix is mainly used in order to show the sense of four let's say if you are denoting four part of the body for disease or anything which is related to four where the quantity is four then in that case we will use the prefix as quadri you can see there are a couple of example i have noted down here we will discuss one by one each first one is quadri cuspid now if you remember in uh, one of our session we discussed about the by right so by we were using and there we discussed about one terminology by cuspid so by is mainly used in order to show the two two walls two cusps right and here we are using quadri 
which is used to denote the four part or four walls so in that case we are using th that's why we are using the quadri so first example is quadricuspid referring to a structure with four cusps or you can say point often used in context of heart valves okay so just imagine a valve of four part where four points are there then in that case we will uh, tell we will uh, call this particular valve as a biquadricuspid valve okay so i hope now it is bit easy for you to relate it with bicuspid because bicuspid we have already discussed there uh, we were talking about the heart valve with two opening or two cusps and here we are discussing about the quadri uh, cuspid valve where we are using the term quadri in order to showcase the sense of four okay then we have quadriplegia quadriplegia means paralysis of all four limbs so whenever you uh, want to show something as quadri uh, means whenever you are showing a patient suffering from uh, a paralysis that affects all four limbs let's say both hand both legs then in that case we will see and, uh, call that disease as quadriplegia same thing we discussed uh, previously also right hemiplegia is there where half portion is uh, affected by the paralysis but but in this case we are using the term quadri that means all four limbs are included or affected by the paralysis then we have quadru quadruplet birth the birth of four babies at the same time so whenever a mother gives a birth for four to four babies then in that case we will uh, call or denote this with the prefix quad quad and replet uh, the terminology is quadruplet birth okay then we have quadrivalent vaccine so vaccine is something that we have heard more uh, at the time of covid right so just assume a vaccine that protects against four diseases at the same time so again there is a sense of four because f we are uh, just giving one vaccine to a patient and it is helping them it is helping the patient in order to fight against four diseases so that's why we are using the term quadrivalent vaccine where quadri is denoting four because we have four advantage of because it your vaccine is uh, taking care of four diseases so that's why we are using the term quadri and qu prefix quadri okay fine then let's see the next slide on next slide we have tetra now there might be one question why we are using tetra if we have quadri so uh, here we, we you you will see like in medical terminology you will see there are many terms uh, which is uh, used as an alternative okay so this is also an alternative term for quadri so yeah you, you might uh, see few terminology related to tetra and some of them related to quadri so you should be aware of all the alternatives as well okay so again tetra is used to make a sense of four here you can see test uh, tetraplegia also known as quadriplegia so here it is mentioned that we can also uh, call it as a quadriplegia it refers to a paralysis of all four limbs so same thing here we can represent same disease with two name tetraplegia or quadriplegia okay then we have tetradactyl having four fingers or toes on each hand or foot okay so when uh when someone has four finger four toes on each and hand or uh, foot then we will uh, use the terminology as tetradactyl where tetra is denoting the sense of four fine then we have tetralateral amputation the removal of all four limbs at the same level so again if you are making a sense of four then in that case you are using the term tetralateral tetralateral is removing of uh, four limbs at the same level tetralateral amputation so just focus on the prefix that we are using tetra then we have tetrapod tetrapod means a vertebrate animal with four limbs such as amphibians reptiles birds and mammals so whenever they have four limbs or we are denoting four limbs animals vertebrate animals then in that case we will use the terminology tetrapod and the prefix as tetra okay 
so these are the all prefix that uh, we are going that we have discussed today which is poly for many or excessive quadri for four and tetra also four because tetra or quadri are the alternate alternatives of each other okay so yeah that's for today and the question for today is what information is provided by the prefix mono or diplo we have already discussed these things so i recommend you and i ask you to put the answer and share your knowledge in the comment section so that it will also help you to recall your uh, topics and uh, then you it would be easier for you to crack any interview because if you know about these terminology and if you are practicing by answering the question then for sure it it will be helpful for you okay so yeah that's all for today in the next session we will discuss few more things so thank you for watching texture method